What's up, YouTube? In this video, we will be using maths to see the future in Trackmania, including win chances for each team. We'll then go through the stats in some more detail and discuss some key points. First, we need to collect representative data for all players. I've done this through threaded screen capture on the live streamed video for the first seven days of play. This essentially means taking a screenshot, using OCR to read the words and numbers, then some logic to work out where the players are on the map. This isn't perfect and sampling suggests it's around 93 to 98% correct, but optimizing this stuff can be extremely boring, so I'm moving on. We now have to make three basic assumptions. Now point one and two are the biggest issues with this approach, but are very difficult to model in data. For point three, because we have data points for all CPs, we can simulate the race in these CP chunks. Then if a player is far ahead of opponents, we will adjust their times and probability of crashing. So how does this work? Let's take an example, Solary versus Team BDS on back and forth. To work out the map win rate, we only need to calculate the chance of each outcome for one round, and then extrapolate this to the map score. Since players can improve on maps over a season, but are unlikely to get worse, we'll take each player's best three performances on that map and drop the bad ones. Using Markov chains and hash tables, we simulate each possible CP for each player and its associated probability. This is essentially like a gigantic probability tree. Each player also makes a decision to safe and alter their CP time profile for each checkpoint based on opponent's position. We continue this until the finish line is reached, at which point we tally up the player finish order into team results. Now that we have the probability of each round, we can use basic combinatorics to work out the probability of each team reaching 10 points first. This is then the probability that each team wins that map. We can then repeat this for all 10 maps. If a team has no recorded times on a map, we'll just assume they would have lost it 100%. For match simulations, we have to also simulate the pick ban rules for each series format using the live seeding. We'll do this by just assuming all teams run the same mathematical approach above and then ban their worst maps and pick their best ones in order. Finally, we can again apply combinatorics to the match to calculate which team would reach the required map score first giving us their match win chance. We then repeat this for all teams. So what do the results look like? I've put them all on my website linked below, but we can briefly see that the results quite closely match the league results. This really is not surprising considering the data is collected directly from that same league. It is interesting to see some basic rock, paper, scissors interactions emerging. Some of these win chances might seem very high, such as BDS versus Alliance, Looking at the map breakdown indicates that your series win chance is quite dependent on your win percent on your first and second picks, but it's important to remember that we've made some basic assumptions on these results, and the results will also retroactively favour the teams that performed well in a compound way. This is because a team that is faster, or already winning, is able to make more safe decisions, which model better. A team that is struggling will always look worse in these stats because they are being forced to drive faster, and probably worse, in an attempt to give themselves a chance to win. So, what about playoffs? Well, the work already done gets us most of the way there. We just need to include the best of two tiebreaker of the deciding map in the matches, and the best of three rule for the grand final. We then calculate the probability that each team makes it to each round, and also each team's overall tournament win chance. Before we go into specifics, let's briefly recap the numbers, assuming all games were just 50-50. Because of the seeding system and the grand final favouring the upper bracket winner, we see that seed 1 and 2 would each have a 75% chance of making it to the final, and the top two seeds combined chance of winning the tournament would be 87.5%. The chance of seed 3 to 6 winning the tournament would be just above 3% each, and their chances of making it to the final would be 12.5% each. Now let's review the breakdown in full. This is certainly interesting. Let's note how Solary would be most scared of facing ITB, but BDS would be most scared of facing G1 in a hypothetical final. It is interesting how each of the top two seeds have different weaknesses. For fun, on the website I've also added a button that lets you simulate the bracket outcome. Doing this a few times might give you a better feeling of just how likely each number is. It will probably take a while before you get a winner who isn't Solary or BDS. Who knows? Your random playoff result might be the one that actually occurs. Now, it's really time to criticise the data in some more detail. 
The biggest issue is the improvement teams could make in two weeks of practice. Not only could their bands change, particularly now they know the real pace of opponents, but also their consistency and pace is likely to improve. It's difficult to know how much, but something obvious to point out is that there is more room for improvement for the bottom seeds. So top seeds will probably have a smaller advantage than is displayed. Let's also note that if this playoff model was being updated in real time, like most betting websites would do for live sport, its model would quite heavily update. Whoever the winner of the seed 3-6 to six playoff is, is very likely to have made a significant step forward, and their adjusted true win rate going into the top seeds is probably going to be better than displayed now. However, there are just no way to objectively account for this. We don't know what the team's performance will be in the future. Another thing to discuss is the emotional aspect. Solary have two world champions, but BDS beat them in the regular season. The players cannot fail to dwell on this, particularly before the match. Likewise, even though Alliance is being bashed by the statistical modelling, let's remember they actually have the defending TMGL and TMCL champions. So, to briefly put out some opinions, I would put Solari as slight favourites over BDS. They have fewer maps they need to work on for the head-to-head. -head. Pack was measurably the best player in the regular season, and Carl had the lowest crash rate in the league. For seeds 3-6, to six, I think I would highlight ITB. ITB have one of the best map matchups going into the top two teams and are probably the most likely to cause an upset. However, I think Carmine Corp is the most likely to win the seed 3-6 playoffs. This is simply because they had both players put in excellent performances on the final two days of play. G1 and Alliance both have something to prove on reliability coming into the finals. It would still be wrong to write them off though, particularly given all four players have put some very strong performances in the past year. So what do you think about the playoff chances for each team? And was any of this stuff surprising to you? If you are interested in any more details, check out the website. Until next time.